I'm your host, Annie Bowles, and this is News Du Jour. Welcome to News Du Jour. You may be wondering, why am I, Annie Bowles, here hosting this podcast? I usually start by telling people I'm a political baby. You see, my parents met working on Capitol Hill. By the time I was two, I had been in my first political commercial and even got lost crawling around the West Wing. Don't worry, Al Gore found me. My family then moved abroad when I was nine, and I attended an international school in Brussels with kids from all over the world, and it is this type of global perspective that I also bring to our show. I graduated from American University in D.C. after studying political science and art history, as well as interning on both sides of Capitol Hill. I even interned down the hall from where my parents met. I'm now pursuing a professional certificate in journalism at NYU in conjunction with Rolling Stone magazine. I guess I was always that friend in the group who cared deeply about not just what was going on politically, but also globally. I often kept my own friends informed through high school and into young adulthood, so I guess I've always done a version of this show. I'm genuinely passionate about following the news, and I'm here to break it down for you guys every weekday. We always strive to be a calmer space to get your news, or as one listener put it, like getting your news from a well-informed bestie. I'm so glad you're here. Guys, I have been rediscovering myself as a morning person. So I used to wake up at 6 a.m. every day before high school by choice, by choice, you guys. College, obviously, I fell off in that. And then when I was working, you know, in the beginning of my working life, when I lived in New York, I would get up at 530 in the morning and go work out before I went to the office. So I've been, I've had a strong history of being a morning person for much of my life, waking up around 6 a.m. So I'm trying to implement that again. And it is making like this recording time I record in the evenings. It's making it a lot more painful. I'm not going to lie. Actually, getting up in the morning hasn't been too bad so far, but it's more the evenings that are getting hard hit. So we'll see how I rejigger my schedule to accommodate this. Anyway, I wanted to remind you guys that the Wild Mother Creative Studio, the floral studio here in Oklahoma City, has generously gifted our listeners $10 off their Valentine's Day arrangements. The Wild, the Wild Mother, in my opinion, is the premier floral studio here in Oklahoma City. They are the best florists and so talented. And what they create is really beyond flowers. It's art. It's love. It's meaning. So if you have someone meaningful in your life who you'd like to get flowers for, you can get $10 off with the code news du jour on their website. And I have that linked in our show notes. And then also you can just send that website with that discount code to your your boyfriend, your husband, etc to get that $10 off. So I hope you guys will hit them up for your Valentine's Day needs. And without further ado, we'll go ahead and jump into the episode. So we have two mini stories for you guys today, and then we have two longer stories. Let's jump in. So both of these mini stories like were breaking right as I was going to record. I was like, well, shit, they need to know about that. Shit, they need to know about that. Okay, cool. So I wanted to make sure these were two things that you guys knew about because they're very important. But the first one is that as I was going to record this, President Biden said that the U.S. plans to hit, quote, multiple targets, end quote, in response to that attack on U.S. troops in Jordan, likely perpetrated by Iran. So this is obviously terrifying and something that should not be taken lightly. We will be sure to keep you guys posted on this, though. Yesterday, again, as I was going to record this, Israel announced that they plan to flood 
the underground tunnels beneath Gaza to try and take out Hamas. Now, They've been considering this for some time and have been very public about that. But such a move is kind of unthinkable from my perspective, given that we believe many of the hostages, if not all, are being hidden down in these tunnels. I'm not sure what they're thinking, but I will definitely keep you guys posted on any further details on this. Or if it happens, of course, it will show up on our Instagram stories first. And then we will break down any details here on the show. Same with President Biden's plans to hit multiple targets. If and when that happens, you'll hear about it first on our Instagram story. So be sure to follow us. It's at newsdujour.podcast on all platforms. Um, Yeah, we'll just keep you guys posted. These are both really sensitive things. Stay tuned. For our first longer story today, Republicans make moves to impeach Homeland Security Secretary. So Republicans are now pointing their frustrations about the border crisis away from President Biden and towards a man named Alejandro Mayorkas, who is Homeland Security Secretary. They are accusing this man of disregarding federal laws on immigration, and they've been holding hearings on this subject. If he was removed from his office, he would only be the second cabinet member in U.S. history to be removed, according to NBC News. The hearings have been ongoing, but a vote to impeach the man probably would not happen until next week sometime. The burden of proof here, though, for an impeachment of a cabinet member is, of course, high crimes and misdemeanors. So, so far, we haven't seen any evidence of like crimes in general. So that definitely feels like this burden of proof is not being anywhere close to being reached right now. Definitely makes it feel like more of a political attack than a legal one, but it's making a lot of noise nonetheless. And I'm sure appeasing Republican, the Republican base. So I wanted to make sure that you guys knew all the details about this and we'll definitely keep you guys posted. Next up for today, a very exciting and historical story. Amelia Earhart's disappearance may be solved. So Amelia Earhart's disappearance is obviously one that has captivated and pained the world for almost 90 years. And now this age old mystery may have come to a close because of sonar data. We had a sense of where Amelia lost contact and therefore where she may have gone down. But this area has been searched over and over and over again by many different parties looking for her. So what has changed? Well, it's important to understand that most people do not comprehend how deep the freaking ocean is. I know I don't fully understand it. I saw a video recently that, you know, attempted to explain these depths or like demonstrate them. And it showed how if you turned Mount Everest upside down and put it at the surface of the ocean, it wouldn't even go halfway towards what we think are the deepest parts of the ocean. So her plane could have just crashed in a particularly deep part of the vast oceans that she was flying over and making it very difficult for us to locate her. But a man by the name of Tony Romeo, a former Air Force intelligence officer, is the CEO of a group called Deep Sea Vision, and they have been combing the bottom of the oceans looking for Amelia. Literally, they have an underwater drone that can capture video footage as well as its location, and they found what NBC describes as a, quote, blurry plane-like shape that Romeo believes is Earhart's twin-engine Lockheed 10E Electra, end quote. The image was captured halfway between Australia and Hawaii, about 100 miles away from the island, where Amelia was set to land and refuel, Howland Island. What's more, this man, Tony Romeo, is an expert in planes. He obviously, like we said, worked as an Air Force intelligence officer, and he believes that the unique shape of this particular aircraft in the ocean has to be hers. He said of the find, quote, 
you'd be hard pressed to convince me that that's anything but an aircraft for one and two that it's not Amelia's aircraft. There's no other known crashes in this area and certainly not of that era, that kind of design with the tail that you can clearly see in this image, end quote. Ugh, I get chills just thinking about that, that this man is an expert in aircraft, so he knows what he's looking for. Now, there have been people throughout the years who have believed that they found Amelia's plane or her or pieces of her plane, and it turned out not to be true. So there's still a lot of investigating that needs to be done here in order to really confirm things. If it is her plane, it's been down there for 87 years, you guys, and that is going to provide its own challenges. Additionally, there is no simple way of getting down to where this plane is, 5,000 feet underwater. So we'll definitely keep you guys posted as this unfolds. It would be really cool, though, to see the conclusion to this mystery and if they were somehow able to rescue, rescue her plane from the depths to put it in a museum and, you know, have sort of a conclusion to this story. And that for today is the news du jour. Today, I wanted to leave you guys with the quote, hustle beats talent if talent doesn't hustle. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on whatever podcast platform you use to listen. A rate and review on that platform or a shout out on social media would mean the world to us and help us to be able to keep creating the news du jour and reach more people who need a calmer space to consume the news. But the best way to support all of our work is to become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash sugar free media. And that is also linked in our show notes. You can follow us on social media at newsdujour.podcast on both Instagram and TikTok. You can follow my personal account at it's Annie Bowles on both platforms as well. Any little noises you may hear in the background are my rescue pup. He has a little separation anxiety and always records with me. We appreciate you listening and look forward to telling you about the news again next time on News Du Jour. Broadcasting from... Oh. Oh.